Hello, everyone. We will uh, briefly just, uh, we'll talk about where the overall concept for the landscape is this evening. Uh, it is important to note that where we are right now, it's really more about understanding and making sure we're getting the program elements into this project that everybody would like to see incorporated into the final design. Uh, we have certainly not begun to do any fine detailing or design that will come later on when the driveways and the parking lots and the building and everything really begins to sit. And we make sure we have the circulation, the fire emergency vehicular access where we need. Um, once we have all of that in line, uh, probably during the next phase of design development, that's when we'll start to get into the real nitty gritty of the detail of these sites. So what we were hoping to hear from the group tonight, I will generally, I'll walk through the overall, uh, the circulation and programs of the site. And what I would really love to appreciate, what I'd really love to hear is just the general feedback. Um, you know, we love the element. We can't stand that element. This, this works, this doesn't work. We think this should sh be shifted. Uh, that type of feedback would be super helpful as we move forward. So beginning on Elm Street, uh, you can see right now we're looking at, and I know there's been a lot of conversation about bus and auto traffic, but right now my understanding is we're looking at having the buses come in this area with a drop off and the passenger vehicles in this area with a drop off in this zone. And as you can see the parking lot, this parking lot on the east side of the property has shifted down a little bit and this parking lot has been flipped. So it's in more of a northeast, southwest orientation. Um, and what we do like about this is the loading is a little more tucked away. Um, obviously, auto turn studies will have to be completed to make sure the, the loading vehicles can come in and maneuver um, as needed. But right now, it, it, it doesn't put the loading area at such a presence with the front of the building. And we've also been able to put some accessible parking in this zone, which will allow for more direct access to the main entry of the building, in addition to access to this back daycare zone. Um, moving back up to this front part of the site, we understand that we are looking at this general area as a rain garden slash detention area to help with stormwater mitigation. Uh, and we will be working closely with civil to understand what the overall volumes need to be of this area. And this was one of those examples of we, we understand that there are some people who might say, just leave it as a detention area. It is just open space to be viewed. And we totally understand that. Um, but of course, our job as the landscape architect is to look at your site and try to understand how we can maximize the usable space throughout your site in addition to the overall program experience of the children. So we are showing right now conceptually a possi the possibility of having a crosswalk in this zone and perhaps eventually a crosswalk in this zone um, so that during the middle of the day when we don't have the bus and vehicular traffic, if a science teacher or an art teacher wanted to bring a class out here, we could have just very simple little amphitheater type seating, very simple cast in place concrete slabs and stone boulders. So the classes can come out here, uh, observe butterfly houses. Um, and we're envisioning, when we say rain garden, we're not talking about your typical rain garden that is super messy, nobody upkeeps, but a very simple plane of uh, a New England wet mix. So it can survive, um, those little grass seeds can survive having their feet wet, but it doesn't require heavy maintenance. Uh, we do understand that maintenance is a key issue uh, for these public schools. So wherever we see um, these large open areas, we're really looking at a mix of larger growing grasses that are mown perhaps two or three times a year, and really just having the manicured cut lawn where necessary for visibility and safety. Um, as you can see in on the north side of the existing Wheelock School, the drop off and parking lot has been streamlined a little bit. And in this, at this moment, 
Um, we also know that Arrow Street will have conversations with police and fire, because as I mentioned, um, we all know that the emergency vehicular access will ultimately be a huge driving factor uh, in this project. But right now we are hoping that the fire and police um, team members will allow for access in this zone from Elm Street through here, around the south side of the building, and then back out. Um, but again, that needs to be confirmed. Um, we're hopeful that that will work because we are ideally hoping to maintain this central zone between the new school and the existing school so that we can really create um, a quaint area where we can have your relocated Victory Garden. Uh, we understand the existing map building is to remain. Uh, we're hoping to have an outdoor courtyard area in this zone. Uh, and we also understand that in this area, there are existing transformers that may or may not be able to be relocated. Um, so we're hoping, um, depending upon what fire and police say, um, we're hoping that we don't have to run a, an emergency vehicle lane through this area, but we will see. Um, right now with regard to accessibility, as you can see off of this bus drop off, we have several uh, just clear sidewalks, both to the existing school and to the new school from the bus drop off and from the existing building so that we have clear access points and transparency um, between the two schools. And then we have uh, this, what we're, we've heard, we've heard through the team that this concept of a walking classroom has been popular, which admittedly I had not heard of this before. So we're really excited about this, um, but we are right now proposing the introduction of a walking loop, which is illustrated by this orange dotted line, generally in this area. And again, this has not been designed, but we're working around the existing softball field and the existing swing area. And we're trying to use this potential emergency vehicular path to create a safe walking zone where your children can walk during the day safely. It is uh, away from the roadways, the parking lots, and really tucked away in this zone so that we have, um, we have that interface between the schools and then your natural resources in this area. And then continuing to the south of the building, this is where, of course, we have cafeteria and the really active zones within the school. And this is where we would have more uh, formal outdoor dining and play areas. And we have heard uh, that the existing Wheelock playground will be um, in this, it is in this location to remain. And we have heard that um, it is preferred that we have a separate playground um, for the new school, which is why we're generally proposing it in this area with an associated basketball court. So just very quickly, uh, these are some character images for the, the general zones that we're uh, reviewing or considering right now. Buffer zones, so very simple, mature street tree, deciduous tree plantings. We understand that Medfield is known for their rhododendrons, so we'll be certain to have those throughout the property. Uh, open play areas, we understand we're keeping these existing softball fields to remain and we are proposing um, perhaps a new field in this location, again, in tandem, in tandem with the existing fields on the east side of the site, uh, which would also have nice accessibility with this rotated surface parking lot. Uh, for the more active playground area, this type of element, when we get into design development, we are hoping to have the opportunity to work with um, a playground committee. Uh, this will be really important to understand the conversations with regard to what type of play equipment is your town interested in having. Uh, there, you can imagine there's an infinite, there are an infinite number of uh, possibilities. Uh, we tend to offer up oper um, natural type play, traditional type play, contemporary type play, or mixture of the three. But that's something that when we really get into the design detail, that will be very important to have consensus with a team. 
And then of course the main entry arrival, which we have, we really appreciate the way Arrow Street has bookended the building here so that when you enter your site, this new Medfield Elementary School is really gonna have a presence. Um, and this, again, when the drop-off areas and roadways really start to settle, this front entry courtyard is gonna be super important. And so this is just some general character imagery about how we hope to uh, incorporate safe seating, viewing, waiting areas, um, bicycle zones, uh, site lighting, et cetera. And then again, when, we, when I was talking about this area with the lower maintenance, when we talk about rain gardens, we're not talking about messy unkempt plantings, um, but really using a mix, just a very simple seed mix that doesn't have to be mown uh, more than two or three times a year. And then these more articulated mown paths and in this area, as you can see in this image, boulders, just simple areas where kiddos can sit uh, for a science or an art class. Outdoor classrooms are going to be, we think the outdoor classrooms will be important, but again, that's further conversation with the school. Just getting the kids outside, whether it's a little ant farm, butterfly houses, bird houses, having seating opportunities, perhaps outdoor chalkboards so that the teachers can get their kids outside wherever possible. And if appropriate, just having informational signage here and there so that the kids just have that constant visual and educational interface between what they're viewing. And then of course, you're all familiar with your Victory Garden, which is another element we're very excited about. This is unique to your school. So we look forward to understanding, uh, you know, is this the correct location? What type of accessibility, vehicular and pedestrian accessibility will you need? How, how large do you want it? Um, et cetera. And then finally, in this courtyard area plaza, again, opportunities for um, accessibility everywhere, that's a given, uh, but seating, outdoor seating, um, little um, just kind of off the beaten path for informal classroom opportunities. And with that, I will open this for any questions. Any questions from the SBC or comments? I like the walk-in classroom. Yeah, me too. I think that's a great idea. And it's cool. Yeah. So part of part of um, standard design for schools uh, from a safety perspective is is having um, accessibility on all sides of the building for um, police and fire, public safety, as Jade sort of alluded to. Um, so there's a certain amount that we'll need to loop around and, and uh, even some paved areas between the buildings. So we'll review that with, uh, with the chiefs, but um, that does create an opportunity for um, sort of that, that track uh, type uh, walking uh, classroom. I think it's a great idea. Anyone else have any thoughts, good, bad or ugly? I think it's fantastic. Thank you very much, Jade. Um, it's it's great to see it coming more and more alive. So um, thank you. So I, I would also add, just draw your attention. Um, obviously, there was some some uh, reconfiguration of the parking, which I think has been an improvement. Um, also, a reduction from some of the other site plans that we'd seen previously. Um, I do uh, personally really like the. Um, simplification of the drop off in front of wheel lock. I think that'll help out a lot um, just to sort of simplify that drop off process. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're, we still need to do a little exploration on the existing map building, um, but it is shown in its current location there. Um, you know, we may explore moving that, um, but, um, you know, without um, sort of creating any more additional costs that. Uh, um, we're trying to avoid so um, um, but so that is still still in its current location yeah Mike I'm, I'm when I look at this I know it's a four or five configuration but it, it just strikes me that there is some benefit that comes to the two three school by by being on this location it just you know it it, it, it seems like there's going to be a real benefit for the second and third graders 
is you know that's going to come from this at least my observation yeah i mean the the design team really is trying to build in that relationship between the two buildings with you know functional space that that both schools could share um and then in addition you know things like the you know the stage and and some of the other things in the in the new school that the second and third graders could certainly uh utilize and you know we've talked about some of those synergies about being key to why we chose this site um not just uh because of you know space constraints or some other things but based on function and, and educational benefit so um i agree bob Any other thoughts from the SBC? All right, um, great job, Jade. Thank you. This is Thank you. Uh, really, really coming together nicely. Thank you.